Hey, Donna Schwartz here from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site for practical tips and solutions to help you with your music performance issues, problems, that kind of thing, and to help improve your performance. So thanks for joining me for this Facebook Live session. Spread it around. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're watching this on the replay, share it. That would be awesome. Share it with your friends, folks, all those kind of people that play saxophones or, or are uh, music teachers, private teachers, public school teachers, that kind of thing. I had a ton of questions this week. I'm going to try to get to as many as I can, uh, but they all centered around, I like to center it around themes. They all centered around your tone and in particular, I guess fattening up your sound, um, but also just making your sound clear. That's a better way of putting it. So the first question I had, um, this person was saying that they can slur into the palm key notes. So, okay, so they could slur, cool. Um, but they have difficulty getting them to speak when they're tonguing. Hmm, so if I can slur into those notes. What's going on if I can't tongue them? I think what's happening, and I could only guess because I haven't heard him play, but um, from many years of experience, I could say this. Your tongue is getting in the way. And uh, two things. Your tongue is getting in the way. It's, it's not getting away from the reed fast enough when you're articulating. Now, let me backtrack for a second. When you articulate on, on a saxophone, you've got to aim for the tip of the reed. Okay, a lot of people, it's interesting, a lot of people aim for the bottom of the reed. If you aim for the bottom of the reed, you're going to lose control over the sound. And, um, you know, the thing is this, when you're playing an instrument, you want to be in control of the instrument. You want to control the reed. You don't want the reed to control you. You don't want the instrument to control you. Hey, Johnny. Um, so when you're articulating, the spot's not here. The spot's on the tip. So... It doesn't matter whether you use the tip of your tongue, although most people do. <laughs> they use the tip. <laughs> Some people find that difficult to do. Their tongue may be large in their mouth, so they've got to use the front of their tongue right here. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay? Here's the thing, though, for you people that use the front of your tongue. You've got to be careful because it's very easy to touch the tip of the reed and keep your tongue there. When you do that, your sound tends to distort or crack or squeak. And you're thinking, wait a minute, I tongued properly. What's going on? I tongued at the tip of the reed. What's going on? It's because your tongue's not getting out of the way. So that's one thing to watch out for. And let me show you how to fix that. Really simple right now. You can either do this on the neck or just on the horn. Um, it's air sounds, basically. So you set up the way you normally set up, right? I think the letter V or F. And it doesn't matter what note I'm, I'm fingering. I'm just going to do air sounds. And I'm going to focus on, for me, the tip of my tongue touching the tip of the reed and getting away. So I'll start off with patterns in duple, which means that I'm, I'm uh, breaking down each beat in sets of two. So here's my beat. So I'm hearing and feeling. If you do like a minute or two of that kind of practice every day, like if you're finding you're having problems with your articulation and you do a minute or two of practice just like that every day or over here, that's going to help to clear up your articulation. Because remember, we're trying to build muscle memory, okay? That's why, that's why we repeat things. That's why people say, it must be played perfectly three times in a row. It's not to be a pain in the ass. It's basically building muscle memory, okay? So practicing um, articulation through air sounds, okay, whether it's on the mouthpiece, neck, or the horn, that's going to help you. So now for this particular person with the problems articulating into the palm keys, or the front keys, it doesn't matter, guessed, and I was right because he said I was right, um, his tongue wasn't touching the tip of the reed and he wasn't getting it away. 
He could have been touching the underside of the reed. Let me just try that for a second. Um, oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> that's really, um, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty nasty. It, it really sounded honky, right? And I don't mean like honky-tonk or honky-tonk woman. I mean honky. Yeah, that's out of control. All right, so here's the thing. Either the tip of the tongue or the front of the tongue to the tip of the reed. Hi, John. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I like the saxophone. It is a Mark VI. Um, okay, so hopefully that helps you with the articulation. And again, uh, this person said that they could slur up there to the palm keys. So I would suggest you do air sounds. And then... If you need to slow down the tempo, slow it down. If you need to do quarter notes, do quarter notes. In fact, you know what? You should do quarter notes and half notes, and that will really make sure that you get your tongue out of the way of the read. I know I had a whole bunch of students, especially younger students, when I was teaching in New York. Um, I'd be sitting there and trying to figure out why are they squeaking like crazy? What's going on? They never got their tongue away from the reed. And it particularly happened with clarinet students. Um, don't know why, but I, I guess because the mouthpiece is like angled. Yeah, that makes it a little bit more difficult to use the tip of your tongue. Um, so they were having a particularly hard time with that. So just keep that in mind. I don't care if you use the front or the tip. It has to touch the tip of the reed, okay? When you're doing special effects, like check out um, Derek Brown. Yeah, beatbox sax. Check him out. He's awesome. He does a lot of special effects, and he'll use uh, different parts of the reed to aim at to make those special effects. But you don't go there yet until your regular articulation is clean and clear, okay? Um, so that's, that's one thing. All right, so that's articulation. The next question was this. How do you um, open up your tone, basically using your oral cavity? Um, so here's the thing. Here's my answer to that. Um, people that know me, that watch my Facebook stuff, that uh, join my website, get my weekly tips at DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, um, know that I'm a proponent of doing a lot of singing. I don't like singing. Um, I hate, hated singing when I was younger. I hate my voice, but I do it. When I hit college, and I play trumpet too, by the way, when I hit college, uh, I studied with Vince Panzarella for a long time, and he said, okay, you got to sing everything in fixed do, and then you could play the mouthpiece, and then if that's okay, then you can play the trumpet. Woohoo! That was rough, okay, because I never sang before, and in fixed do, that was a challenge, especially since in college we were doing movable do, so my brain was really, really, like, fried. <laughs> anyway, what that taught me was that you really need to be able to hear, uh, not only hear the pitches, not only feel the rhythms, you want to know what you want to sound like. So one of the things that uh, you want to do in order to open up your tone, here's my, my general answer to that. You need to listen to great players, you know, to people that you want to sound like, okay? Now for me, I love Dave Cos. I love his sound on tenor and alto. Um, even soprano as well. Jerry Albright, love his sound, right? Um, if you think about James Carter, right? That guy could play. Holy cow, right? Think about people that you want to sound like and get that image in your head. Then the next step, whatever you're playing, um, what you want to do is you want to sing it first. Now, do you need to sing for your entire practice session? No, no. We got to be reasonable about that. A lot of us don't have much time. But if you're working on something and you're noticing that, you know, your sound is uh, sounding nasal, it's really, it's something up here, okay? It's fixing your imagery, your visualization, your tonal concept, your concept of sound. That, after, you know, much listening and all that kind of stuff and singing is going to help to open up your sound. Now, many people would, you know, say, well, you know what, Donna, I think you really need a you know, a larger tip opening and, you know, a different type of mouthpiece and different type of horn to really open up your sound. You know what? Here's the thing. Every single person is different. 
I could play, someone said nice horn. Yeah, it's cool. It is a nice horn. Um, nice mouthpiece too, right? The Iwana uh, Gaia. I could have the most expensive qu equipment in the world and still sound like shit. <laughs> you like my, my language here? Um, I could sound really bad if I don't have a good tonal concept or a good concept of sound. Um, someone had just passed around some videos on Facebook. You know, this guy who normally plays a Mark VI, he, he took out his tenor YAS-23 Yamaha, and I think he played like a stock mouthpiece. Sounded the same. Why? It's up here. Okay. Now, while you're developing this by doing a lot of listening, you also have to work on your tone. Okay, which means that, yeah, you should incorporate singing into your practicing. You want to know what pitches you're going for. You want to be in tune with them. And as you're developing, as you're really focusing on your long tones and not just blindly playing long tones because, oh, I'm supposed to play three long tones a day, check, check, check. No, if you're focusing on hearing a whole orchestra behind you or a whole sax section or a whole rhythm section or, or you know, you playing tenor hearing a barry sax underneath you, if you're focusing on that, you're really developing your, uh, your sense of sound and tonal concept in time, your, your tone's going to open up. Um, and you don't need to, you know, be thinking about getting the latest, greatest equipment. Now, does your mouthpiece and horn have an effect on your sound? I'm going to say a little bit. Um, I'm going to say, honestly, it's not a big, great deal. If you do have the $99 special horn, yeah, it's going to make a, that's going to be a big deal. Okay, I mean, that's obvious, right? But if you have, you know, a good quality horn from a good manufacturer, and you have a solid mouthpiece that's um, that's not defective, okay? That you know your reeds are are able to um, adhere to. You know your your reeds um, uh, when you do the suction test, your reeds are fine with. Then it's all in your tonal concept, okay? So you don't need the latest greatest equipment. You just need something that works for you, all right? Because everybody's different with that regard. So again, how to open up your tone using your oral cavity, cavity, <laughs> singing. Listening, a lot of listening, um, and you know, uh, it's funny. I just was teaching today. That's why I, I'm like a little frazzled right now. I was just teaching for a few hours today, and I had one student who uh, beginner. Um, he's been playing for a year, and I just got him right now at a school. It sounds good. Okay, sounds good. Looks great. Okay, he's not like stressed out and tense. Sounds really good. But I asked him to match a pitch, so. I said, can you sing bum? And he went bum. I said, try again. Did you hear the pitch screaming in your head before you sang it? No, okay. Bum. Hear it in your head? Bum. And he said, I don't like singing, you know, and uh, I just don't like singing. And I mentioned before, I'm not happy with my voice, but you know what? What Vince taught me is it's your own voice, love it, all right? And if you think that you hate your voice, it's gonna sound it's going to sound like crap. That's the bottom line. But if you hear the best singer in the world or even just the best saxophone or trumpet player or whatever in your head, you're just going to go for it. Okay? Honestly, who gives a crap what other people think about how you sing? All right? Unless you're a professional singer, you know, if you're playing an instrument, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't matter. So definitely go for it in terms of the singing. The other thing that people may not be um, aware of, too, if you're, and this goes into the next question, this person was saying how their notes um, sound pinched, and I'm going to talk about, you know, what that would look like, but I'm also going to talk about it from a throat point of view, and this is coming from a brass player's point of view, and which applies to the saxophone as well. Brass players do a lot of breathing exercises to relax, to get the air flowing, to... Um, to be efficient in our playing. You know, when you're playing the saxophone, if you close off your throat, your pitches are going to go sharp. You're going to sound nasal, okay? If your tongue level is too high all the time, you're going to be sharp. You're going to sound nasal, a little too bright. So in addition to the singing and imitating how your oral cavity is when you're singing, you want to also think about, you know, relaxing your throat. And uh, I'm just going to show you a really quick exercise that I do with all my students. It's the one finger exercise. And what this does, I actually tell my younger students to, uh, you know, to take like deep breaths before they have a test in class just to clear their head. This definitely relaxes you and Vince showed this to me. I just take one finger, I put it up against my face 
And since I'm, I'm, you know, originally from the Northeast, from New York, I know what storms sound like. I know what wind sounds like. So what I want to do on the inhale, I'm thinking the syllable O, and I'm thinking about a winter storm imitating the sound of that wind. And then I blow it out on a toe. Small t, big O-H. Notice the syllables, the syllables are more important than the t sound. So it's O, toe. Notice how relaxed your throat is when you do that. Now, if you want to be smart about it, set a metronome up and breathe in time. Okay? Notice what's going on, how, how relaxed you are, so that when you play... Your throat should be just as relaxed as when you went... If it's not, do a lot of that breathing exercise and just relax when you're playing. If you're finding if you're finding that you need to like clench up or something like that to get notes, your setup may be a little bit off. Your reads may be too stiff or just not uh, not balanced or just not the right read for you. Uh, the mouthpiece baffle may not be right for you, okay? So it's just something to think about. Now, notes being pinched. I've had a bunch of students this week, and I've noticed their embouchures, and what I've noticed um, is up here, the, the top part of their mouth is like really super, um, gosh, I can't even do it, just super pinched and tight like that. When you're doing that, um, when, you, when there's tension in your body, okay, actually do this with me, those of you that are on here, and for the replay, if you make a fist, what's tight in your body? Is it just your fist? No. I'm feeling it in my forearm, my elbow. I'm feeling it in my shoulder. I'm feeling it in my shoulder blade. I'm actually also feeling it in my leg too a little bit. Okay, so there's tension there. If you're super tense here, which you shouldn't be, it's going to come out in your sound. Okay, you're going to feel it. I'm feeling it all around my mouth. I'm also feeling it in my jaw. So you should watch yourself in a mirror when you're practicing. Um, if you're... Let's see. Yeah, it's just tense. Not only is that really sharp, there's no core to that sound, and it's stilted. But if I'm just relaxed, the top lip seals the air from escaping. Big difference in that sound. So, if you're, watch yourself in a mirror. If, you're, if your face looks like this, you need to relax that, okay? That's just, that's going to open up your sound. That's going to fatten up your sound big time, okay? So, definitely check that out. Um, I think I answered all my questions. Someone asked, can you play the sax with your eyes closed tight? Yeah, I could, but, you know, <laughs> I can. I can play sax with my eyes open. But think about it, though. If your eyes are closed tight, I'm talking about tension, right? So aren't you introducing a little bit too much tension with that? You know? I mean, if you're going to close your eyes, just relax it. too tight. I just felt that. I felt myself biting. And that just cut out my altissimo. Um, <laughs> that made me lose my vision for a second. So, yeah, you know what? You see all these great saxophone players and they're like squeezing their face and all that kind of stuff. Don't do it. Okay? It's gonna, it's gonna stilt your sound. feel the need to close your eyes because maybe it makes you concentrate just close them that's all okay all right so i hope that this 
Facebook Live session helped you, please share this replay with uh, you know your saxophone playing friends and with music teachers, especially with music teachers that don't necessarily play the saxophone, because there's some things that you know when we when we um, take music education classes and we take methods classes, we learn how to play all the instruments, and we get if we're lucky, you know we'll get four weeks maybe on an instrument, you know, and then from there if you're a good teacher, you should be pursuing more playing on that instrument to the point where you get to be a really good, really good level. Thanks, Johnny. Um, but the thing is this, though. Most teachers don't have the time after they've taken method classes to really put in to work on the instruments and stuff and such. Um, the thing is this. They may not realize some of the things that I spoke about today or in my other videos on YouTube, Facebook, also on my website at DonnaSchwartzMusic.com. So please share this video, share the replay with those folks. Um, so this way, you know, when they're teaching their saxophone students, they won't teach them the pinched lip and, you know, um, you know, with tension in the jaw and all that kind of stuff. And they're also teaching about a relaxed throat as well. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. All right, I'll see you in the next Facebook Live session sometime next week. And I'll also see you, hopefully, on my website. Join up. You get weekly practice tips every Tuesday delivered to your inbox. Usually one or two tips every week that deal with either saxophone playing, uh, brass playing, music teaching, music education, all that kind of stuff, performance anxiety, all that kind of stuff. Thanks for joining me. Have an awesome weekend. Take care. See you soon.